Laura Kunzberg, BBC News, Westminster. Whether it was a photo opportunity in a pub or a verbal assault in the European Parliament, there was no mistaking Nigel Farage's single-minded determination to pull Britain out of the EU. Arguably, he reshaped British politics over the last two decades. Our political correspondent, Ben Wright, looks at his career and what might happen to his party next. There is some flash photography in his report. Good morning, everybody. The moment of victory. The sun has risen on an independent, united kingdom. And time to bow out. For two decades, Nigel Farage had a mission, to lead Britain out of the EU. And while UKIP has just one MP at Westminster, the party's impact on politics has been huge. Probably one of the most influential politicians in the post-war era, uh, not just of this century, because if it wasn't for Nigel Farage uh, and the hard work that he's put in and the UKIP activists who he's garnered, uh, then we wouldn't have had a referendum on our membership of the European Union. The former city trader was a founder of UKIP in 1994 and soon distilled its pitch to a simple phrase. And what people are saying is get Britain out. In 1999, Farage was elected to the European Parliament, a place he mocked from the start. You have the charisma of a damp rag and the appearance of a low-grade bank clerk. Ridiculing the institution, he wanted Britain to leave. But for years, UKIP could not break through with voters. And in 2006, David Cameron memorably mocked them. I mean, UKIP, I mean, it's just a sort of, you know, bunch of uh, <laughs> fruitcakes and loonies and closet racists, mostly. A decade later, <laughs> Nigel Farage would have the last laugh. With his fag rattle chuckle and love of a drink, Farage is not like most politicians, but the jovial demeanour disguised serious intent. A seriousness that hardened after he was badly injured in a plane crash in 2010, an experience that spurred him on. And over the next five years, UKIP made huge strides, coming first in the European elections in 2014. And Nigel Farage celebrated in a Westminster pub, of course. UKIP's campaign against EU migration, the European Union, mainstream politicians was cutting through, not only winning over disillusioned Tories, but many working class Labour voters as well. David Cameron promised an EU referendum, in part to head off the UKIP advance. Today in Benfleet, Essex, where UKIP came second in the general election, some disappointment at Mr Farage's decision. Well, I was shocked when you told me. I just, you know, he's quite a, seems a nice guy, not scared to say what he wants. He took the party from being a fringe organisation and in under sort of a decade it's now a mainstream political force. So, yeah, a very impressive figure. I'm glad he's going, honestly, because especially the way he treated the people in the, in the uh, EU when he went there, the way, this, the way he spoke to people, it was disgusting. A divisive rabble-rouser to some, a hero to others. UKIP without Nigel Farage will lose some of its colour. Where the party heads next without its public face and with the referendum done is a question for his successor. Ben Wright, BBC News, Westminster.